Hello, Salt Strong Nation, Joe Simons, like diamonds. We are back. Another episode talking about sheep's head. We've got little bro, Luke Simons, like diamonds, Tony Acevedo, like avocado. We're missing Wyatt today. He is working on some top secret stuff for our insider club. If you're not an insider yet, just so happens this whole episode is sponsored by the Salt Strong Insider Club, the only place that helps you catch more fish save time on your tackle and unite you with friends with their amazing community go to saltstrong.com forward slash pricing or podcast for that matter to learn more about the insider club How, what do you guys think Is that natural that that flow that little ad that's nice, that was very nice mm. but yeah you said yeah. time though save time on tackle i don't i don't know if people need to save time on tackle but. oh yeah save, save money on tackle Gee, that's why we can't get any sponsors for this podcast <laughs> I'm kidding. We're, we've rejected quite a few of them uh, because we don't like doing stuff. It wasn't even natural. But I hope if you're not an insider member, you will go check it out. Uh, this is what you see on YouTube and what you hear on the podcast. This is the the free stuff that we put out there. We we put out a lot of content and the majority of it is for our insider members. We save the best, really the on the water footage because the on the water footage is the stuff that you just can't replace. That's the stuff that truly does save you time. And, and we have uh, I think it's in that blog post, Luke, where uh, you and I went out and and just like uncut, right, for about 40 minutes, went to catch sheep's head using these little crusty crabs by Chase Baits. And uh, it was nerve wracking because I hadn't used these things before and we ended up you know, doing pretty well. And uh, that's the stuff I think is just incredibly valuable to see real dudes going out there with real lures and real bait and just trying to catch fish uh, in new spots. And so we're doing that every single week with multiple fishing coaches now that's all yeah and and for the club too the the unique thing before we were going to talk about sheep's head fishing and then this is like the ultimate this is time to get started they're they're starting to show up in big yes. numbers time to catch one sheep's head but but as far as the club the unique thing that is i think uh, the most valuable part at least one of the most valuable parts is that we actually show the spots where we're catching fish so that you can find similar spots near you it's one thing to kind of talk about it it's another thing to literally look on a google map and show, okay, I caught some snook there, some redfish, some trout there, some flounder here on these conditions. And that way you can just look for the same type of spot near you and, and you can replicate the results. So that's really the, that's what is, what we never show publicly, obviously, because we have a lot of upset people, <laughs> but, um, but it's, it's invaluable. Um, and I learned from Tony, like it's, it's just so much, um, just seeing stuff like that, it, it significantly increases the learning curve. So yeah, again, hi, if you haven't tried it out, just give it a shot. You'll love, you love it. Yep. And I'm going to give you a quick tip on saving money, not time. Well, it might save you time too. So I was planning on showing one of these crusty crabs outside of the pack. And I made the mistake, Tony, you've done a couple videos on this and it keeps coming up and yours truly just completely did bozo move. I was putting stuff in the top of my tackle tray real quick. And this is the new Z-Man Slam Shady jerk shed i had one of these that was rigged up i put it in there i'm and they were separated by the way but because it all kind of moved around this crusty crab ended up laying on top of just the end of the tail of the z-man and the two of these are really with any kind of soft plastic and z-man they do not play well together save yourself some time keep these in the original package i wish i just put it back in and if you don't know what happens it looks like i mean a flat out fire like chemical reaction these things merge together and all of a sudden now this crusty crab is like half leg half jerk shad it is a complete mess i had to trash the whole thing it's nuts right i'm talking like barely touching and all of a sudden these two things are merged together and just completely ruined uh it, it is a monster monster chemical reaction to mix a lot of these soft plastics together so always tony right Keep them separate or keep them in the original packaging. Don't let them touch. Even yes. those crab lures, like if, if they touch any other, even if it's not Z-Man, if they're touching any other plastic, they'll melt together. So I just, like you said, I keep them in the box. I'll have the box always with me. And if I use one, I'll put it back in when I'm done with it and they're good to go. Yeah, I was, I was just about to say, it's not just Z-Man. It's, a, it's a, basically putting one brand against another and, and them touching it, it's bad news. It's a risk. And even if it, it doesn't even have to be hot, I've, I've had them just sit inside in room temperature. And if they're touching each other, game over. They both get ruined. 
Yeah. So yeah, the safest bet is just to keep everything in the, in the package it came in. Yeah. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about best sheep said lures in a second. Let's, let's talk about the, the when first, because that's an easy one to kind of cross off. We're going to talk about the where, like best places to find sheep shed. We're going to talk about the, the when right now, many best times of the year, tides, et cetera. And we'll talk about some of the best lures and live bait. And then obviously, you know, some tactics on how to use them, how to rig them, how to retrieve them, how to get more strikes. So um, you kind of teased on earlier, Luke, like we're, we're about to hit the the kind of prime time you can catch sheep shed especially down here in florida pretty much all year long but winter time starts getting a little bit cooler they start coming in what's what's the what's the deal is there a certain temp is there a certain month where all of a sudden you're like all right i'm putting my big boy sheep's head pants on yeah i'm i don't know i don't i usually go out in the winter time there's their sheeps would be caught all year long but the winter time it seems to have that they're the most prevalent in shore and uh, as far as like the wind, uh, like I, I generally do best when it's just sloppy conditions. And it's usually because that's my target them, <laughs> really. Um, when, it, when the, after the cold fronts come in, the, the cold fronts will often cause, you know, the, the redfish, snook, trout, flounder, the, the fish that I'm generally targeting, it, it'll cause them to really slow down and be more lethargic. And I feel like it fires the sheep's head up, like, uh, or at least it doesn't impact them. And, um, uh, and sheep's head are, are often caught in canal systems, which are the easiest to fish, easiest things to fish on really cold, you know, windy days after front comes through because you have all those houses blocking the wind and you can get these little sheep, these little sheep's head lures, these little crab lures and sheep's head love them. Um, so last year was the first time I started targeting sheep's head with artificial lures. And now it's all I use. Like it's, it, they work, they work extremely well. And, and Joe and I, we did that podcast. And we'll put a link down below on that, but we, we just literally fish these two lures. This one is for dropping down the pilings. When they're sheep that are up on the pilings, they just totally smack this as a really nice fall. And then this one's from Savage Gear. It sinks really fast, but it does really good on the, on the ground. So this is like dragging across the bottom, or I guess it would go this way. <laughs> dragging across the bottom, it almost looks like the, the, sheep, the, the crab is retreating from that sheep's head as you're retrieving it, and they love it. Um, so these are the, the only two lures I use. So far. Cool. And so time of year, it's colder when it's gnarly. Cause that's how, that's why we did that podcast, right? We realized in your little Maverick, we couldn't even get out. So we're like, yeah, hey, I guess we're going to, we're stuck in the canals. Let's target sheep's head. Uh, any other times, Tony, what about you? When are you, when are you targeting them? Yeah, it's the same thing for me, especially fishing from a kayak. You know, I'm, I'm kind of limited if the weather's really bad to get out there and fish the flats after a cold front comes through and plus like luke said you know the bite really shuts down for the the main target species redfish snook sea trout and sheep said they're just easy to catch you can catch them from shore you can you know put your kayak in the water and go to a bridge launch right next to the bridge and fish the pilings you know tie up to the pilings if you need to so you don't get taken away by the current and the wind and all that but uh, yeah, wintertime, as soon as the cold fronts start coming through, I'd say January, February, March, uh, down where I'm at, Central Florida, seems to be a really good time. You know, the sheep's head school up. Yeah, cool. and, uh, and another thing too is for pier fishermen. So for land-based fishermen, it's, I think it's one of the best, the easiest to catch fish that tastes really good um, from shore because you go to a pier Right. And the biggest mistake I see people make on the pier is that they're casting as far as they possibly can. Their sheep's head are mostly right on the pilings. So they literally just get, uh, and when you're on the pier, it's hard to, so those fish get pressured a lot more. So probably smarter to get like some, like an actual live bait, but just fish right down the pilings because that's where they are generally feeding. Um, and a lot of people overlook them. Uh, they're, they're just not fishing it. So it, if you just think, I guess, don't think if you, um, if you, you know, if you don't have a boat or a kayak that you can't catch them, like they're very accessible fish, um, yep. to land-based people. And we'll talk about rigs in a, in a little bit. You have something else, Tony, or, uh, I want to talk about the tides too, while we're still on the, on the, the wind, like what time of year and, and time of day or tides, any, uh, any tips there, or do you guys even catch them during slack tide? I seem to seem to have the best luck either on high tide or when high tides changing to low tide just because there's more water up on the pilings. So that presents like basically a new feeding zone for those sheep's head who couldn't get up to those 
barnacles and oysters that were on those pilings during low tide. So it just presents more feeding opportunities for those fish. And I, I just have the best luck uh, during high tide, incoming tide, or that transition from high tide to low tide. Yeah, and I, I, I really don't pay attention. To, I just I just go. It's, it's usually the thing I go when I um, like nothing else is working. I'll go to some cheap side. And um, so it's to me, it's kind of situational too. If I'm fishing in an area that has a lot of current, like if I'm fishing dock pylons where there's a lot of current, it's just really hard to fish um, those, those crab lures in particular because you need to have pretty low current speed for them to work. And so I would, I would try to plan it around the turn of the tide. Um, but if I was fishing the, the, when the tide was really moving, then I would just go to the, like a canal system that doesn't have quite as much tidal flow. Um, because again, like they're, they're, as long as you get, as long as they're there and you get a, a good lure or a good bait in front of them, they, I feel like they're, they're pretty likely to eat. So it's, um, it's really just kind of go when you can go in my, from my experience. And that's where the current's tough because it's it's hard to feel a sheep's head bite in the first place. And then if you're trying to deal with current, that just makes it 10 times harder. Yeah. And one thing, they are very finicky. So it's not the type of fish that you can have like Otis on board. Like my dog Otis making all sorts of commotion, uh, particularly when they get it, they actually go up on the flats too. And you can, you can actually sight fish them, but they're really, they're actually hard to get on the flats. Some people you can get them on fly rod which is like the ultimate challenge because they're, they're very, very finicky on the shallow water. The, uh, the easiest way again, is just get fish and bridges or fish some docks. Um, again, if you're like, like bridges in particular, it's probably better to go around the turn of the, of, of the tide. That way that the current's not just cranking through. Um, as Tony said, like they, they do have a pretty, um, pretty sl uh, slight bite and need, and they have hard mouths. So you need to get a good hook set. And so it's just easier to do around the turn of the tides. Um, slack is not gonna be good, right? It's when it's just totally not moving at all, nothing bites quite as good, but um, they'll still hit. If you get something in their face, they'll still they'll still eat it. Yep. Cool, let's talk about the, the where, like what type of spots you mentioned in canals. That's a, a very popular place. You mentioned Tony Bridges. We've uh, mentioned some piers anything with structure i mean if you guys you know don't know uh, a lot of these uh, places that we mentioned are good because you know you've got wood and pilings and cement that's underwater and it's got all kinds of barnacles and crustaceans around it and just stuff and those if you haven't seen a sheep's head teeth we will have one of the pictures up here somewhere in the in the blog post there's a thumbnail i mean they got some gnarly teeth i mean they're literally just crunching through the hard stuff, these barnacles and all this hard shell that you see on the side of these pilings. Uh, so talk about that, like why are they so attracted in the wintertime, you know, to uh, two places like docks and in these canals with a lot of structure in it. So I was gonna say when you are looking for docks and bridges to fish for sheep's head, look for the older ones, mm -hmm. just because they're gonna have more growth on them. You know, if you go fish a brand like it, if you're fishing canals, like Luke said, if there's like a string of four brand new docks and then all of a sudden you see this old beat up one, I would go fish the old beat up one because there's a good chance there's more structure in the water just from whatever may have fallen off that dock. If it was, you know, beaten up by a storm or something like that, there could be structure in the water and also it's just going to have more growth on it. So just a, that's a good tip there if you are trying to figure out, okay, which bridge should I go fish or which dock should I hit for Shape's Head? Yeah, just their anatomy. They're they're designed to basically just chew up barnacles and get the, the meat out of them. And so in, any hard structure, when we mentioned all those things, the, the one thing they have in common is hard structure. Um, you know, docks, rocks, um, like bridges, just really like anything hard that barnacles will grow on will more than likely attract sheep. So, but, and, but they'll also go up on the flats too. And um, I'm sure they're just eating smaller stuff out there. The, the flats are, again, way tougher. The go-to for me is getting on, getting on around that hard structure and just getting, getting a bait down there. Right. It, the, the key though, is to be right on the structure. Like if you look at them when they're, when they're on a, on a dock piling is they're not like swimming two, two feet over and looking around and coming back to it. Like their nose is on that piling, right? That piling's right there and their nose is basically right on it. So, so if they're, you don't have particles, so you want them yeah, to eat like, feeding yeah, time. It's, it's not like a snook or a redfish that sits near the, the piling and looks out and like is looking for something to go attack. The sheep's head is looking in right on, right on that piling. 
And so wh whatever you're, you know, whatever you're going to try to catch them with is crucial to get it right down there next to that hard structure. And so that's, uh, I think that's the biggest tip that I could say as far as a, um, a make or break thing. Like if you're casting, like for the shrimp flavors in particular, if you cast three feet off to the side and let it drop, it probably won't catch anything. And if you're six inches from it now, that's, that's the, the key. Yeah, some of our best cast have been when we're just doing a quick little pitch, like with this crab, this crusty crab, for instance, and it actually like just barely hits the actual, you know, pole or cement or whatever it is, or wooden, uh, wooden beam. And it like literally hits it right where the water meets it and it just falls straight down. And, and, and once again, you're letting line out, uh, but not too much because you don't want to let the thing run away with it, but you're letting line out as quick as possible to hit. And, and all these sheep set, right? They're usually always at the bottom. I know there's some that might come a little bit higher to, to keep chewing, but for the most part, I think maybe they can feel our presence. Do, do you agree with that or do you disagree in terms of? Be up to, I mean, they're up the pilings a lot too. It's, it's a, you know, most are on the bottom, but, the, but don't overlook the, the, um, the pilings. Do you, get, um, do you yeah. get many strikes on that? Cause I feel like every time, I've done it. I'm always getting in when it hits the bottom, or maybe they already yeah, have it. Yeah, most on the bottom, but there, there's, there's a lot that uh, that'll hit on the on the drop too. It's uh, that it happens. That uh, and the key is, you, and you, you're not, your line is not going to be tight at that point. A lot of times you don't really know because, like, you just kind of do the count. Okay, it's on the bottom, and then you reel up. Oh, I got one on. Um, if if it's a calm day, it's it's tough to do it when when the the wind's cranking like after the cold fronts. But if it's calm out there, you can just watch your line on the water. And, and as it's going down, you'll see like the line just do a quick little jerk. And, and that'll, that'll be the sign that you, that you have a strike. So if, if like that day we were out, Joe, that um, I guess the couple times we were out doing filming, it was uh, pretty windy. So like, it was just hard to even notice. But, uh, but on those calm days, you can see, you can see um, a majority on the bottom, but there's a lot that hit up in the mid, mid column as well. What about you, Tony? Where, where you get, catch them in the water column? Usually on the bottom, I find it tougher to get them when they're up top, just because it's hard to keep either a lure or a bait in the strike zone. And if you want to keep it in the strike zone, you basically have to throw it out there weightless, and that can make it hard for your cast to be accurate, unless you know you are up on a pier or up on some high structure where you're just dropping something straight down. Uh, but I found that the crusty crab is one of the things that I'll use or have rigged up just in case I do see fish up top just because you can cast it out there and it'll sink slowly. So if that fish does see it, you know, they, they have a better chance of following it down to the bottom and then striking it. Yeah. The crusty crab is the, I should have said that before. The crusty crab is the only thing that I've found that catches them on the fall, like on the mid column, but it does it, it does it really like surprisingly good. So like, um, I don't think I've ever even caught one on, on like a shrimp or crab on the fall because I'm usually waiting on the bottom to get them just to get it down. Yeah, I'm usually getting them on the bottom, but if you have like, a, if you're using shrimp or uh, my favorite bait, I'm sure we'll talk about it in a few, but is a fiddler crab. You put it on a small, you know, number one octopus hook. And if you have light enough tackle where you can fling it out to that piling, it'll slowly sink and there's a better chance of that fish finding it before it basically gets out of sight. Cool. All right. So we've covered the, the win tides and time of year and kind of cover the the where kind of you know best best spots let's talk about the what to use so we'll talk about rigging you mentioned some of your favorite crabs little fiddlers we obviously got these little chase baits and what savage gears the other is it those kind of the two leaders in terms of making these little sheep's head lures those are the two probably most pop there's another one what's that there's a really expensive one that's made out of australia i can't remember the name of it um that's chase baits right no, there's another one, a crank a crab. It has the treble hooks. It's got like two treble hooks on the arms. The and I got one. Crab. I'm going to use it. This, this, I got one. I, I, I couldn't find it until pretty late. Um, till the, like it was like late spring when I, or summer when I got it. So I got, I'm not sold on it because it's, it has treble hooks, which is in, in the fact that most of the sheep's head are by that hard structure. That's not good for treble hooks. That's a guarantee, not guarantee, but it's a very high chance that you're going to get snagged. And it's like a fourteen dollar lure, twelve or fourteen dollar lure, like not a good combination. These these crusty crabs, they're expensive. What's that? They're expensive. Like I was yeah, they're pretty expensive. 
Yeah, it's like nine for two. It's like nine dollars for two plus or minus. But where are you uh, shopping? You shopping at fishstrong.com? I must have got ripped off. <laughs> And, uh, and then the Savage Gears are actually the best deal where you get two for like six bucks or something like that. Um, but again, like, although that's kind of expensive for a little crab lure, they'll catch a bunch of fish as long as you don't get snagged. And, or, or mix them with Z-Man or any of their salt. Yeah, or put mix the Z-Man. <laughs> um, but, they're, but they're way less expensive than some of the alternatives. So um, like to me, like I caught more fish last season, more sheep last season on the lures than I did on shrimp or, cra- or, or live crabs. Mm. what about um, you johnny yeah i mean you you toss shrimp down and it's gone in two seconds even it, you don't know if the sheeps had taken it puffer right, fish that's, pinfish, that's the problem and you drop one of those lures down and it comes back when you reel it back in <laughs> you're not getting a bear hook coming back to you so they, mm-hmm. they definitely last you know i can go out and have 50 to 100 fib- fiddler crabs and only catch two fish on all those baits that I have, but you go out with one of these lures, if you know how to use them properly, you can catch multiple fish on just one lure. Yeah, but it, it does require, it's not the type of fishing to go take a kid doing, or like somebody new to fishing because it requires very precise casts and like a lot of concentration. It's not, it's not like, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just not something for somebody re- like new. For people new to fishing, it's really hard to beat getting live bait and putting on the bottom. Um, so yeah, I know Tony, you did, you, know, you did a lot, some good videos on, on rigging uh, the crabs. And one, one that I recommend, I think is the easiest of all, and you can catch a lot of bycatch just as far as like taking, if your goal is to take a kid out, we have a lot of, a lot of people and that's just the goal. Like they just want to go out and, and have, show their kids a good time and get their kids interested in fishing. Um, what I recommend it's, it's catches everything and it doesn't get, get caught on the snags is to get just a bullet weight this is a traditional weight for like bass fishing like a texas rig bullet weight what's what and size then, what what size weight uh, it depends on the depth this is three sixteenths ounce it's kind of a good well-rounded um depends on the current i, I fish this, i fish this with like a bridge that's like, like 10 feet deep um i did like five to ten foot depth range i would say as long as the current's not cranking it'll work and i just put it um i put uh, this these j hooks on there and rig the shrimp backwards. And we'll put a link down below to show exactly how to do it. But you can rig the shrimp weedless and get it right down there in the structure, right where the most of the fish are. And it's, it's a game changer. It was a total game changer for me because you can get it right over there where you know the fish are and you don't have an exposed hook. So um, it, it was a total game changer. But to Tony's point, cause we did a podcast, a live podcast on that. And I, I think we only caught a couple of sheep said we caught a lot of fish, you know, and you get those just, I mean, talk about mangrove snapper grunts, ever just destroying little sea bass, which is awesome for the family, but made it really tough. If you were actually going out there and trying to target keeper sheep said, yes. um, if you're going just for sheep said live fiddler crabs are hard to beat or those, uh, what are those crabs on the mangroves? I think called spider crabs or something. Those things are dynamite too. They're hard to get. Yeah, mangrove crabs or mud crabs. Yeah, fiddler crabs are probably the best bait you'll you'll get in the winter time. The only where do you where do you get them, Tony? They're, well, that's the thing. They're the hardest bait to get in the winter time. <laughs> it's because they bury themselves in the mud. And we have a video uh, showing actually. I believe it's on the insider group. I went out and dug up some fiddler crabs for myself in the winter time and use them the next day and caught some nice sheep's head because they'll they'll bury themselves. Those little dime-sized holes you'll see on the shoreline, that's where they're at and you have to dig them up. And uh, in the summertime, you'll see them running rampant around. <laughs> so in the wintertime, it's hard to find them, but if you can get them, that's going to be your best bet. If not, sand fleas. Sand fleas right now are pretty abundant in the bait shops. I know Pompano fishing is very popular in the wintertime off the beaches. So sand fleas are very abundant and those can be a really good bait as well. I think I rarely use shrimp just because of, you know, the frustration of losing a shrimp as soon as you drop it down to something else. Yeah, I did, I did some, I did some filming. So last, for the couple months, like toward the end of the last sheep's head season, I tried a few times. I really want, I was soaking a GoPro on the bottom and then putting some baits right in front of it. And I really want to see how a sheep's head actually goes up and eats. And I had multiple times where the sheep said they're real camera shy. They'll come up and they'll see the camera and pause and then bolt. Like they, they're uh, they're pretty, 
pretty uh, shy fish. But what I, what I noticed in doing that is shrimp. I put a shrimp down and even if it's only little pinfish, it's rare that a shrimp lasts more than like 20, 30 seconds in, in many cases. Because if there's pinfish around, it's, they're like piranha. They go up there and they just totally just annihilate that thing and knock it off the hook. And, and it's, it's by far the, I think, what is the major cause of bait stealers. Um, because even little snapper, I've filmed little snapper and they'll come up and they actually suck down, even a small snapper will suck down that shrimp decently well. It's those pinfish are the are the really the ones that are just the most fierce and the quickest to arrive um and then when i would then i'll sink down a sand flea um that's that's way better um the pinfish will still eventually get to it but it's like instead of 30 seconds it's like three minutes and then i'll put a crab down there a fiddler crab and it's like it's like five minutes or more at last and those pinfish you can see them they're pecking at it they just can't they can't get a good grip and so um, that's way more time for sheep's head to find it before the bait gets ruined. Yeah, I will say the one thing I do use shrimp for is I'll go and buy like a pack of frozen shrimp or I'll get some some of the fresh dead shrimp that they take out of the bait tanks overnight and they just put them in Ziploc baggies. Some bait shops do it and I'll use it as chum. I'll keep it in the bag, crush it all up. And then if I know fish are in the area, but they're not really feeding, I'll throw you know a handful of shrimp out that'll get them feeding you don't want to use too much because then you'll fill them up and you won't you won't catch them so it's a, it's a fine line is how much you want to use but shrimp could be a good uh good way to chum them up get them feeding get that area a little active tackle shop tony note to self if you own a tackle store tony's probably hanging out behind your your place when you're shutting it down and taking some of your leftovers <laughs> um speaking of that what about just barnacles you know i i've personally have not done this, but I know there's some people that would literally just find some of those old dock pilings and scrape barnacles off and use that. Have you guys done that? Yep. I've done that as well. I bought a, a you don't actually, it's a chum them up, right? It's like, it's, yeah. those things are so small enough. You can actually put a hook in those little things, but um, I've, I've seen people use barnacles yeah. as bait before. Hmm. I haven't tried it, but yeah, there's some yeah, dude in the Facebook pilings. Yeah, the Facebook group was talking about scraping them off and putting them on a small little like long shank hook. And I was like, I've never done that before. Um, hmm. So, but so you've used it as chum just to get them like feeding, but you've never used it as bait. Yeah. Okay. I parked right on a piling, scraped barnacles off for about five minutes, and then drop a fiddler crab down and hook it up almost immediately right underneath me. Oh, really? You didn't even have to like leave for a couple minutes? You just right then and there. Nope, just scraping it. All the noise you would think would scare the fish off, and I think it attracts them. <laughs> Dinner bell, baby. I know it's 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 a feeding time. So let's. Do you have something else on that, Luke? No, I was gonna say I just uh, I I, don't, I know a lot of those things filter a lot of the water, so I I like to let uh, I like to let them let them uh, let them be and just go go catch them with um with again they, they if you have crabs or anything else they'll they'll, they'll eat, it, eat it. So it's not a that's not a requirement. Oh, you're a hippie. Look at you. Of course you are. <laughs> Long-haired hippie. <laughs> I'm worried about the old dock pilings. I'm trying to conserve them all. <laughs> I'm going to make me a wood yeah. bench one day and out of... <laughs> Keep going, Tony. Yeah, I'm fiddling right now. I'll, I'll back. <laughs> you're fiddling a wood bench. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, if you are scraping stuff off the pilings, know what you're scraping. If you start scraping off oysters, you can find yourself getting in a lot of trouble. <laughs> So make sure you're not doing that. Thank you, Tony. Um, <laughs> let's talk about positioning because uh, that that's a question that comes up a lot too. These little guys, they do have a little weight, right? But I don't know even says what they weigh. Oh yeah, 4.5 grams, which is, let me do the math, 0.15 ounces. It's actually right there on the stated, but uh, that's pretty light. So how close are you getting? What's too close where you're spooking them? Uh, I know you can, you know, be quiet and just sit on a dock and drop it, open the bale and drop it straight down. Um, probably better chance from a boat or kayak. What do you guys, what have you guys found? Is there a, a, a position that gets too close where you're now spooking these or they're on high alert? I'd say 15 to 20 feet, just either at an angle. Like if you're casting to a shallow dock, be at least 20 feet away. And if you're, Fishing straight up and down if the water's 15, 20 feet, you know, that that's a good depth that you can catch them right underneath you. So I've caught them r literally right under the kayak in about 15 yeah, feet of water. 
Yeah, it's, it's a bit, yeah, depth is a big factor. Like if it's, if you're fishing a shallow flat and you get 30 feet from them, they're, they're gone. And, um, but if you're right above them and it's 30 feet deep, you can get right above them and drop face down. Well, let's um, just talk about a typical, like these canals, since that's, that's where we fish a lot that are what, 10 feet ish. Yeah. A canal that's like five to 10 feet. Um, I, I just stay 20, 30 feet away. just like Tony said, just, you need to, because you have to get an accurate cast and it's really hard to, to cast those really light lures accurately from a distance, especially if it's windy. Um, so you just basically try to get, try to get as far away as you can while still comfortably casting to the dock pylons. And so you, you could not be too far away ever. And you definitely can be too far away. When you get too close, uh, many cases, if you see them, they can see you and, and they're, they're gone. Um, you just have to hope that in many cases you, you, you can't actually get, cause I've actually watched them like sight so fished them and watched them eat where they're on that piling and their tail is towards me. So they're looking at the piling away. You can actually get really close to them as long as you're quiet and you're not making any big pulses with the troll motor, just go at a nice steady pace. Uh, you can get really close to them and they will eat, but just know that as soon as they start looking at that crab, if, if they can see you, they're gone. Like they're a, they're a very skittish uh, fish. And the, the benefit that we have is that we know that their face is buried in the piling most of the time. So, um, so it is possible to get close, but um, I'd say when in doubt, get as far away as you can. Cool. A uh, hook set. Talk about that. You know, you mentioned that this, for a couple of different reasons is maybe not the best for a, a brand new person or with kids. Uh, it is a little bit more, you know, finesse, meaning you have to actually be paying attention and kind of be ready because it can happen really fast. Um, how are you guys setting the hook to make sure you get these bad boys, these toothy critters? It's really, really just a slight pop, especially if you're using braid and to feel the bite the difference between like a sheep's head biting compared to like a pinfish, I feel like the sheep's head, it's more of a tug than like a pop. So once you start feeling a slight tug, that's when you want to set the hook. And a lot of people say, set the, set the hook before you even feel the bite. So if you know they're there and you know they're biting every now and then I'll, I'll just start, you know, popping the rod and see if there's a fish on there. Hmm. Interesting. I've never done that. I, um, I, I think the, it's as if we'll talk about the lures first um because that's that's just my favorite but it requires a sensitive like as tony said there's a there's a noticeable difference as long as you're feeling for it and you have good gear with braid line no stretch and a sensitive rod you'll feel the thump versus the tap the taps are the pinfish they're going to be tapping it in little small smigger snapper they'll be tapping it's it's hard it's hard not to set the hook because you know that you need to get a pretty quick hook set. A lot of times they'll just kind of grab it and let go. Um, but you'll feel like a, it's a slight thump. It's not like a trout or a snook thump. It's just, you can feel it a difference and then, and then there'll be weight. And that's when I let them have it. Um, not like a bill dance, you know, huge hook set, but, but like a nice firm, like you're set it to mean it. Cause their, their mouths are pretty tough. And, um, and with these hooks, like on these crab lures, these hooks are pretty small. So you're, you're, you're not like going like way down in there. You're going to, you have to hook it right through like the top is pretty much always going to be right in the top of their lip. And uh, it's, it's strong. There's, there's a lot of bone there. So you have to set it like you mean it. And if you miss it, it's rare they come back. Like, so you, you have like one shot and it's not like a trout where you miss it and they'll probably come back around and get it. Um, it's rare that they come back a second time. Yeah. And if you're using, you know, um, fiddler crabs or sand fleas, my favorite rig to use is a dropper rig. That's where you have the hook above your weight. And I like to use a heavy weight, you know, like two or three ounces because that helps anchor your line down better, especially if there's a lot of current that way, because the hook is above the weight. If anything's touching that hook, you're going to feel it better as opposed to having like a, a split shot above a hook or something like that, where, you know, the split shot is basically absorbing the bite you can't feel the bite unless you you know have the weight of the fish on there so having a hook above your weight definitely be good if you're trying to feel that bite and that's what you use for fiddler crabs yep i use that like i said a two two to three ounce bank sinker on the bottom and then a number number one octopus hook or a one octopus hook if there's big sheep's head around you can go with that bigger hook but i, I like to go smaller just because you never know how big the fish are in the area. Where do you hook your fiddlers? I hook them underneath the body, you know, underneath the belly and then out through the top. 
It's nothing fancy. And I, I rig them so that, you know, they're facing out away from the hook. And I, make sure you keep the claw on. That's almost like, a, I don't know, it helps draw the fish in. I fish with fiddler crabs that didn't have the claw on compared to ones that did have the claw on. The ones that had the claw were getting hit a lot more than the ones that weren't. So I, I feel like it almost draws those fish in. It's like a sight, an indicator of food being there, if that makes sense. And so on the claw, do you hook them right in the back? Let me just get this shrimp. Cause I don't, I, I don't use the flip crabs quite as much. Are you hooking them right there in the middle or do you hook them off to this, like a corner? Right in the middle of the body. Okay, so right in the middle. <clears throat> up through the bottom of the, bo uh, the belly, up through, out through the top. So it's basically like this, where it's just, you know, the hook point is going back toward the back. And as you, if you pull yep. it, it's basically retreating. Yep. yep. Very nice. Very cool. Um, let's talk about one of my favorite topics, color. I know the crusty crab and this savage gear. And what's the other one The out of Australia, the cranker crab, cranker. They have quite a few different colors. Have you found one that works best? This is the one that, that we were using. I don't know if you guys can see it in the glare. Uh, that one's called sand sand something yeah um, i don't even know where it I, is i just go natural like yeah, i just uh, I let me just try to match yeah, the sand crab, crab yeah and so here are the here are the two that i use most often so with chase baits this one's called uh, i forget the name of it but it just looks like it looks just like a crab and then this one same thing brown top white bottom gets the job done don't have you ha seen a difference in the color of these suckers what was that? Have you seen a difference in color? Not really. I, I've seen pictures of guys catching them on the like the really dark black colored ones, and they have one that is a really purplish kind of color, and they still catch fish on them. One thing I would add, if you are using the the artificial ones and you're not getting a lot of strikes, is to add some procure or some type of scent, some type of uh, either blue crab or shrimp scent onto it. Can definitely help. Because that lure is going to be sitting in the strike zone for a pretty good amount of time. So it helps, you know, that scent draw those fish in and they could pick up on it as opposed to something you're working really fast and, you know, they can't pick up on the scent trail. Yeah. And it was, yeah. Cause last, um, last winter when I was just starting out with the, the testing of the sheep's head of the crab lures for sheep's head, I was, uh, the only procure I had was, uh, was shrimp. And so I didn't feel like going to get any other. So I was like, let me just put this shrimp scent on there on the crab lures. And they were, they were loving it. I don't know if they, if the scent mattered at all, but like, um, it was an interesting lesson that you don't have to like, okay, I'm using a crab lure to get crab scent. Like, I think just get some scent on there. And, um, if they, if they get close, that it's just good for them to not smell a human scent is the, is the key. Cause they're, they're picky. Like they, I don't know, as long as I guess we, we kind of said before that they're they're kind of anything like they you really have to do things right. Uh, but as, as long as you do, like you can catch them in the middle of the day and on good and bad tides like they're uh, they're fun fish. Yep. And good, good eating. What, let's talk about that. How do you like to cook your sheep's head? I, I grill, but I'm uh, I either grill them or blacken them. Or those are always my two favorite ways to have almost every fish. So um yeah, I, did, I would once, I might start doing some grocery shopping. So after work, just go in the canals and uh, catch one or two for dinner and, and clean them, put them right on the, on the skillet and blacken sheep's head right out of the water is, that's hard to beat. Nothing, nothing beats a long day of whittling wood, like a sheep's head. <laughs> yeah, it beats whittling wood. <laughs> uh, Tony, what about you? Do, you? do you keep, do you keep much on the? Yeah, when I target those, I keep them and I'll, I'll just fillet them and like Luke said, either blacken them or just put lemon, lemon pepper and butter on them. And I'm a fan of beer battering some fish too. Just if I'm, if I'm in the mood for that, they go really good with that as well. After a long day of clean sweeping 872 pounds, uh, Tony <laughs> loves sheep's head and Luke loves it after whittling wood. Yeah. All so one little, thing, all his little hippie friends. <laughs> we <laughs> braid each other. We go. braid each other's hair before we watch the sunset. <laughs> all right you're gonna make me so this one's even worse so you're gonna really get a kick out of this but so i think the biggest talking about cleaning the fish or, or cooking the fish uh, the biggest issue that i've heard people say about about sheep's head is oh my gosh they're a pain to clean like they're so hard to clean and the, and 
what I finally realized they're not. So the, the tough thing about cleaning them is their rib, their rib cages, like the, the ribs are really thick, but the trick is just to cut around them. Like uh, just literally just like whittle, whittle around the, the ribs and, 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 and it's surprisingly easy. So this is not drawn to scale, but I just etched this out literally as, as we were talking. This is, this is like the <laughs> Alabama leprechaun. If you guys are watching this, Amateur oh sketch. my gosh, the Alabama oh. leprechaun video where the, the <laughs> does an amateur sketch. Of <laughs> so the key is like when you're doing the cut, let me just go ahead and etch it with the, with the brown. This is important. Um, this is important. If you guys are listening to this, you have to go watch this video at this time, yeah, this wherever is, the heck we are. Forty. This is important. Minutes. So oh the key God. is to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the key is to, to cut with a black line. Like go way out there and go around those ribs and straight down and all the ribs. This is definitely not drawn to scale. I should have gone over a little bit further, but uh, um, just know that if you just go around those ribs and do a sharp cut, almost like doing a flounder, and, and just just skip those ribs, and it's it's really it's surprisingly easy, and uh, and you don't miss much meat because those ribs are really thick and they go they go pretty far out. So like to cut through them and then cut the ribs off, like you really don't get much meat. So you might as well just just cut around them. Yeah. But uh, that's good art. And that's art right there. Amateur anyways. sketch. <laughs> <Do that one. laughs> <laughs> I've seen people too on the bigger sheep's head is cut the cheeks out. So uh, I'll yeah, miss out on that too. A lot of people just cook them whole as well, clean them out, gut them. Delicious fish. Well, they're good. And this is a nice, it's a, it's a really good meat. Um, I think it's really underrated. Yep. And uh, if you guys want more too, we, we have an entire blog post we did it's um i'm gonna read it how to catch sheep shed sheep's head plus the pdf cheat sheet and catch card if you just go to google and uh, go to google.com and in the search just type in how to catch sheep shed we're number one or two or three depending on how google likes us that day but click on it there's a lot of stuff there and you can da instantly download a pdf cheat sheet if you want a little bit more on this and some even some cooking tips and stuff like that uh it would be like a whole other podcast to go into that but uh, this was really great. Uh, we want to do this because it's come up a lot. You know, part of our insider club is focused on kind of real time, like what's working now. And so this is what we're doing. Public facing for insiders. As I mentioned earlier, we go out on the water and actually film the how to tips like right now. So next week, Luke and I will be in his neck of the woods. Tony's going out this week. Wyatt's uh, right now going out in the water in the freezing cold in the Carolinas and, uh, and filming what's working right now. You know, what, where you're, best chances to catch fish most in particular like inshore slams redfish and speckled trout flounder snook sheep's head mangrove snapper and uh and then we document it all and report it to our members and uh and then it's really just based on trends so we're constantly just tracking that and every friday we do a, a 10 minute video so it's think of it like having a full-time fishing guide on speed dial or in your back pocket where they're going to send you a little message, a little video, get on a satellite map and show you here's where all the fish are. Here's the type of areas you want to fish, the, the type of tides you want to be fishing. I mean, literally just cutting out, I mean, years of trial and error and years of just learning it the hard way and telling you, here's the kind of places you want to go fish right now, like this weekend, we do it every single weekend uh, in 10 minutes or less. Super, super helpful. I'm seeing so many insider reports in our private community of people saying, thank you. This, we call it the game plan. They're like this game plan works. Uh, thank you, Luke. Thank you, Tony. This game plan works. We keep seeing it over and over again. I'm uh, just trying to simplify it. Everyone's busy and uh, not everyone has, you know, four hours a week to watch videos. So uh, we just try to simplify it 10 minutes or less, and you will have a huge advantage over the fish and over your friends. And that is the goal, help you uh, catch more fish in less time. And it's backed by the 200% nope. guarantee as well. Like, yeah. So, I mean, because we're, we're that confident that it works, we know it will, we know you're going to like it. And a lot of people just, okay, I'm not sure if I should do it or not. Like we literally, if you don't like it, we will not only refund you the money, you have to obviously do it. You have to get, and you have to go through and actually give it a shot. Yep. But we'll refund everything you paid and we'll pay double. Like we'll double it. Yeah. We'll if you feel it's a waste of your time, then hey, we'll pay you for it. So. So that is how confident we are because it's, 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 it's a game changer. It's something the whole time we've been building, it's just, okay, what, what do we wish we had when we were having to learn things the hard way? 
and uh and it's it's, it's exactly what at least i wish i would have had yeah, yeah on the water on the water tips are that's just invaluable actually seeing someone else do it seeing how someone else approaches you know a, a canal and a dock line to fish i mean that that's to me it's one thing to talk about it and even show amateur sketches it's another one to actually like, see someone actually fishing it in different areas right uh you know because tony's out there doing it on his coast we're doing it here why it's there we've got some other coaches that are doing it now in texas and south florida so we're constantly adding more and more yeah, this is going on ebay so I, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to oh, go yeah. through a lot of these, a lot of these crab lures. Uh, so you got to, got to raise some funds. So eBay, <laughs> <laughs> don't find yeah. that kind of artwork everywhere. I was going to say, even, even if you're, you know, you're going to learn, learn from us, obviously, but you're even going to learn from the members as well. Like even, even we are learning from the members because they, they post their fishing reports and let's say I haven't been able to get on the water for a week or two. I can go look at those reports and see what's been going on and apply that to where I'm living. So it's, it's not just, just that it's, it's about everybody in there. Yeah. And, and we're yeah. starting to bring on our members, right? We had Bill DeWeese on cause he was such an expert at it's saltwater uh, casting reels. And we've got Pat now coming on our boy, Pat. And he spent, I think it's been a year now testing out only fishing with top water. He just said, you know what? I am going to master top water lures and for a year and he fishes very often pat ogletree that's all he's gonna uh, gonna do we got guys like andy hong in there and and gorgeous george and joe schaefer i mean just constantly uh adding in and brian down in placida i mean I, the list can go on and on of people who are just adding tons of value and uh and we're all learning from like man these guys uh they're they're legit yeah and and it goes through, it's for, it's the whole thing is about we're all learning from each other like just this this uh crab lure um so this this was introduced to me by um by james shower and uh, and jimmy uh, tinnell we were on a meetup and they were just talking about these crabs and and james actually gave me gave me one he was like yeah try it out and it was like it was the most fun sheepshead fishing i've ever had and, and so it's um you just never know when you're gonna learn a really cool tip and and just being uh, surrounded by a network of, of fishermen who just just and just love fishing and and are open to share ideas it's a game changer so that's what again that's why we offer that that big guarantee because no matter how experienced you are fishing especially saltwater fishing there's so many different species there's so many different methods to catch them throughout the season it's literally impossible to not like to know it all and uh it's, it's impossible not to learn some really cool stuff that when you're surrounded by people like that so power of community mm -hmm. yeah, buddy. community not that, not the junk you see on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Well, guys, if you want to join us, if you're already a member, we thank you so much. We love seeing your post in the, in the community, in our private community that we've built. We've, uh, we got some really, really cool things for next year. Even some gifts. Uh, I won't ruin the surprise, but stuff will be mailing to your house uh, for you members who are hitting your uh, second year or more. Uh, so that being said, if you're not come join us saltstrong.com and you'll see a link right at the top or saltstrong.com forward slash pricing, or you can always go to the podcast page and we'll have links for it as well. That's the salt strong fishing club, save you time, save you money, catch more fists, meet some friends. And like Luke said, you got nothing to lose 200% money back guarantee. So that's it guys. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. And we will see you in the insider club and We'll see you in the next podcast. We out. Peace. Later.